welcome. I'm Leah Classic from the Message Week team. Today we are privileged to speak with author and film producer John Classic about the launch of his new book. So John, you recently published a new book, Hope of the Resurrection. Can you tell us a little bit about the book and why you wrote it? Over the years, when I've gone to a funeral, we've, I've heard all different kinds of descriptions as to what we might expect after death. And so this book, The Hope of the Resurrection, is a result of simply asking those questions. What does the Bible say? As opposed to what we believe. And so over a period of years, we found the subject of the resurrection cropping up. Um, what really happens when we die? Are we dead completely? Is there any level of consciousness? Are we in heaven floating in the clouds playing harps? What really should we expect? And what does the Bible say? What does Jesus say? What do those first Christians believe? The book Hope of the Resurrection simply tries to articulate a biblical position on that. So you're quite open about tendency in orthodox Christianity that fails to clearly articulate a biblical position what happens after death. Can you comment about that? Yes, I think we've experienced in Christianity a significant change over 150 years. If you go to most of the Protestant cemeteries of over 150 years ago, you'll find direct overt references to the resurrection on those tombstones. It's kind of amazing because if you look at more contemporary um, epitaphs, you won't find overt references to the resurrection. So Christians of an older generation literally believed in a resurrection when they would sleep in death and then awaken when Christ returns. Today we don't really believe that or we don't articulate it as such. And so there are parts of Orthodox Christianity where we have accepted a level of subculture and other Christian ideals into our Christian teaching. And so when you attend a funeral service, sometimes some of the things you hear don't find origin in the scriptures. And so we try to gracefully, as much as we can, approach the subject, say this is what we have believed in the past, what we believe in the future. There's one tombstone that reads in York, York is a historical settlement in Western Australia. I think it was um, founded in 1831 and was really active in 1836. There's a tombstone that reads this, and this was written on a tombstone of a three-year-old who died in 1884. We shall sleep, but not forever. There will be a glorious dawn. We shall meet to part, no never, on the resurrection morn. And so we understand from this person, they believed, one, we sleep in death, and two, we would never part and there'd be joy on the resurrection morning. And so we have attempted, as best as we can, to articulate in the hope of the resurrection a biblical position on this. Now, I understand that the resurrection theme is very close and personal to you. Yes, it is. In 1987, when my grandmother died, my father organised a bronze plaque. And that bronze plaque says the words, until the resurrection. And we've actually used that on the front cover of the book, until the resurrection. I went there several years later to, see, to respect, pay respects to my grandmother and as I stood on that beautiful green manicured lawn on Tasmania's northwest coast, remembering all that my grandmother meant to me and reflecting on the resurrection, I suddenly found myself awash with tears. I thought, gosh, like, where does this come from? I believe in the resurrection. I believe in Jesus' words. Why am I so filled with emotion? Because for me, standing at her gravesite, and reading the words until the resurrection, it made death seem like an awesome, like an awful trick in time. As far as my grandmother, as soon as she died, she would have heard the voice of Jesus calling. But now she's asleep, and she hasn't experienced that until he returns. And here I am living with my wife and my children and, and being busy in life, like she did so many years ago. And it really reaches your heart and soul when you consider your loved ones in the light of the resurrection. Last year, my mother died. And it was a very close to the wire for me because I officiated at a funeral. And likewise, my dad organised another bronze plaque, this time worded a little bit differently, asleep until the resurrection. And so, yes, it has been very personal and um, it does move your heart. And I look forward to the time when my heart is moved even further when I see both my mum and my grandmother. In writing The Hope of the Resurrection, who was your primary target audience? Look, we specifically stayed away from producing yet another great theological treatise, a great wordy book That's, that has its place in the theological circles, but it doesn't meet the expectations of the everyday person. We wrote the book in everyday language so the young mum with three kids would find it an easy read. 
or the person on the, the commuter on the train in the morning a book to read, or somebody dealing with, the, with bereavement in their lives. We've kept it simple. We've simply described it as the warm and encouraging words of Jesus. What does he say? And put it in everyday words. You'll find it very Australian, so it reflects our culture, our journey here in Australia, and we certainly hope it finds home in the hearts and minds of the, of, of the greater intended audience. The person on the street, the man or woman, who, who have no particular great knowledge of God, they sort of know that there's something beyond this life, um, we have a great secular surge coming over our society that says, look, science has proved there is no God or says there is no God, that our human experience is all there is. Look to science and we're going to increase your life. We're going to use cloning to reproduce yourself. We are going to offer you eternal life. And God says simply, no, I'm going to offer you eternal life. And so we as Christians really have to stand tall, no longer using funny words like sanctification and hard words that mean nothing to the person on the street. Just keep it simple and tell the story in its original simplicity. So how much does the book actually cost and what is your marketing strategy in order to get the book into the hands that it will benefit most? I really think that the book is priceless. You can't really put a price on good news. And Jesus said to his disciples, look, you've freely received, freely give. So what we've done, ignoring good convention of business principles, is that we're offering this book now for free. If you go to message7.org, you can order your personal copy for free. Um, it is good news. It's the best news that you could ever know that one day, that this life isn't all there is. That there is a God. That he has a purpose. That Jesus was resurrected. And that we too, every human being, can look forward to a time of resurrection. And so you'd never be able to put a price on it. Well, thank you for speaking with me today, John, and we wish you well with the book. I'm Leah Classic from the Message Week team, and don't forget to pick up your free copy of The Hope of the Resurrection. Mm -hmm.